Today, we have Jessica Burrell with us to present 3D printing options and comparisons. Um, special thanks to Jessica from Keystone for doing this webinar with us. Um, with that, I'll pass over to Jessica to get started. All right, good morning, everyone. So like I said, we're gonna talk about a couple things. We're gonna go through 3D printing options and comparisons. And I spent a lot of time talking to some of the different companies out there to see what new things they've released since February and what's going on with these different printing options and how they compare, um, especially for a small laboratory. We have about six to 10 people on average in our laboratory. So I wanted to know myself personally what works best for our laboratory. So anyways, we're gonna take a look at some of the options for small printing systems and large printing systems, how they compare. And then Sarah, we'll have a moment where we can go in and answer some questions and have a group discussion before we go into the step-by-step process for creating a surgical guide. So if you have any questions, like I said, just send us a message. I'll try to take a moment to stop um, and answer those after we talk about the different printing options right before we go into surgical guides. And then at the end, we can leave it open for a group discussion. It would be nice if this was face-to-face, -face, but due to the situation, we get a webinar. So this works anyways. We'll do the best that we can with it, and I'll try to get to everyone's questions. All right. So those of you who don't know me, I'm sure everyone probably does, Jessica Burrell. I own a lab, Capture Dental Arts, and we're located in West Jordan, Utah. Um, right now, we do have about six employees, so we're a small lab. I've owned this lab now about 11 years. Uh, Keystone Industry sent some products for me to test, and they sent their surgical guide material at first. And I'm always hesitant to try new materials. I love research, but I find out what works for me, and I hate changing sometimes. I'm hesitant to change, I guess I should say. So anyways, they sent their surgical guide material to me, and we tested it in our small laboratory, and I was surprised with how easy this material works. So I tested some of their other materials, and had a couple questions for them and that's how this lecture came about. Um, I also like to test other systems and see how they work and what printing options are the best, like I said, trying to decide what to purchase for a small laboratory. So we're going to talk about some modern advancements with 3D printing and then some of the different findings and different things. I hope everyone can see that. I know my image is over the top of this bar. Um, Todd from Carbon, he's over their sales team, he shared some information from the NADL which I had not seen this study, but some of the key findings that they printed uh, last October 2019 on a printing survey, and this was pretty interesting to see where printing has gone. So if you take a look from 2014 all the way up to 2018, look how many people, how many laboratories are implementing 3D printing and how many people want to be implementing 3D printing. And honestly, now is the time that we finally can really adapt or um, include 3D printing and be more precise and accurate. And there's so many options that are available to us now that even for a small laboratory, it makes sense. Where before it was a really cool idea, but there just was some problems with accuracy. So some of these studies, this is a little blurry on this screen, but um, what we're mainly looking for, and you can see some of the polls here that they show is, you know, what's our main concern when we're looking at 3D printing? And accuracy, 58% is what, what was rated last October. Reliability, maintenance, 50%. Return on investment, 40%. That's a big deal for laboratories that are small. Um, also large laboratories, we wanna be efficient, but also what's our return on investment? Is this printer going to cost us a lot of money? Is it going to still take a lot of time and labor to have someone run that printer? And what's the cost of our product that we're using? Um, total cost of ownership, we have also different systems that can be more of a, a lease, like carbon, the quality of the materials, and then the price. Uh, customer service is also really important, and then the ability to use some materials. We'll go into a, a different discussion later on some of these specific areas. So 3D printing applications, what do most laboratories want to use them for? I, in the beginning, really wanted them for printing models. I thought this was going to be a great idea. We have a lot of doctors that send digital scans. So I wanted to be able to print models and we ordered a small printer. We have the Moonray, the Sprint Ray system right now. And it was okay. We'll get into that in a little more depth later on too. Um, I wasn't printing surgical guides in the beginning. Uh, crown and bridge, I wasn't printing any bridge or temporary material. Dentures, I think, was 
lacking in some areas, but now is a great time to start putting dentures as well. Um, we have partial den den dentures and the liners. I know a lot of labs are putting on liners as well. Um, when we look at the different systems that are out there, we have, these are some of the top systems. And I'm, I'm gonna take you through a couple areas on how they compare. We have Carbon, I'm sure everyone's familiar with Carbon. Form Labs is one of the smaller printers that a lot of dental practices use. We've got 3D Systems, Stratasys, Whitmix, Envision Tech, Colser. We've also got Nextent. We've got so many other little printers that are popping up too. Um, but we're gonna go through a couple different comparisons. And this may be basic for some of you. Some of you that are looking into getting into a print system, this may be new information. So we have two different types of printers when we're looking at them. The main two that we focus on is the SLA, which is a laser or a light source. And then we have our projector base, our DLP. Now there's a couple different variations and, and each company has their own little twist on the SLA or DLP on how theirs is better than some other competitive brand. But really, some of the new things that are on the market that are pretty exciting is this continuous liquid interface product, which some of you may already have seen this picture or know whose printer this is. We're starting to see other companies come to the market with something comparable too. But what we have here is an oxygen permeable window, or they call a dead zone. So this is for a projector-based printer. And what happens is in that blue area, you can see where that dead zone is, we have an oxygen layer. And that allows that build platform to come down and merge into that liquid and have a continuous flow where it can pull up and continue printing without that material needing to be lifted up out of it and pulled away from it, such as um, other projector-based printers. So this is a pretty new system, and that's Carbon System. We'll talk about them a little bit more later on as well. Um, one thing I wanted to really talk about too is open versus closed. Uh, a lot of the systems we're seeing now are open, and in the past form labs and some of the other systems were closed. Those of you who have heard me talk before, I'd like to compare it to cooking. Um, open is more like having all of the ingredients with no recipe, and you get to choose on how you're gonna put it all together and how you're gonna cook with all these random recipes. And sometimes it takes a lot of experimenting because we don't always know what material is going to work on our printing systems. And when it's open, we have so many possibilities that all these materials may not be calibrated or specifically um, designed to work with that printer. So open can have a lot of variables and you really have to be careful getting into an open system to know what product you're using talk to the manufacturer and talk to the printing company to find out what products they've tested and what they know works well with their system. Um, closed, closed we used to think was a bad thing because you had a closed cartridge, you had to put it in and you couldn't use other materials, you couldn't use other companies' products, which for some of us we didn't like because we were, we were um, set to just specific products. But um, now that we can use open. Some of these systems are going that were closed are moving to an open system now. But the thing about closed that's nice is they know their materials work with their system. So it's very easy, very predictable. You're going to have um, more accuracy with the materials in a closed system versus an open system if you don't know what you're doing with an open system. So when you're looking at open versus closed, you want to look at your technical support for one. What technical support does that printer offer? Um, what is the accuracy and speed and the ease of use? So there's a couple different variables with open versus closed. We thought open would be great. We went out and got a Sprint Ray. I think they're three to $4,000. And we found out very quickly, we had to learn programming to go in and program our printer and actually dive in the coding to calibrate it with each different product we use. And just to do it for one product is very time consuming. So to do it for multiple products, you have to be really good at coding. We'll just put it that way. And like to test and refine accuracy. It can be very time consuming. Um, so here's a couple different companies that I've looked at and I think some that have some really fascinating things going on. Envision Tech, they've got a couple new printing systems that are, are really neat. They're laser-based um, polymers that they use, but their, their laser-based technique is a little bit different than some of the other laser-based printers. You're welcome to go to their website and check them out and see some of the new things they're doing. But some of their new printers they released 
I think are priced a little bit better for smaller laboratories. Still, they're in the past more for larger laboratories, but they've got some really neat systems out there. I just um, was sent over some of their information that I spent some time researching and they've got a pretty good com competitive printer. Uh, here's one of them. You can put, print your models flat on the platform. In this little video, don't slip too fast. See what it looks like. Um, so they've got some that you can print flat models, which I really like, just flat on the, the platform. And you'll see here. And I believe their new printers are really, really fast. So they do a really nice job with model printing. So if you haven't checked out Envision Tech, take a look at some of their new systems because they're really, um, they've been in the industry for a long time, but their newer system is, is a really nice printer. Uh, Stratus is, is, is really cool. Stratus is, is I, I love for the art, for the art side. I wanna find more things that I can print in my laboratory that aren't just dental, just so I can have it a good excuse to get their printer. But really what they specialize is they have a multi-material system so that you can print multiple colors within one and it's self-contained curing. So it prints, it can print multiple colors, it can print even texture. They're one of the leaders in the medical industry. So they're you know, scanning body parts, ears, bones, all different things um, for, the, for the medical industry. But they can print multiple materials in one machine, so at one time which is really neat and it cures within that same box. So your accuracy is very precise because you don't have all the variables from your curing unit. It's built into that box. Uh, this is my system. So they've got a newer version. This is just the moon ray, which is, you know, it, it's good for some reasons. We'll talk about that a little bit more. It's very inexpensive. I don't necessarily care for model printing on this. Uh, if we do print models, what we are printing is solid models, diagnostic wax ups. Um, sometimes we'll print model and die, but most of the time we send those out to a carbon. Here's carbon system, which you're familiar with too, which has that oxygen layer or the dead zone, which makes theirs one of the most accurate printers. And here, once again, is a diagram of that oxygen dead zone layer so we can understand that better. So I, I had some time to talk to Carbon yesterday and really ask them, what makes your printer so great? We all know it's expensive and as a small laboratory, how can I justify putting something like that into my laboratory? Um, and if so, what type of workflow do I need to have to justify this type of printer? But really due to this dead zone that we have here, this oxygen layer, the print is really precise, one of the most precise on the market. And so it allows us to do model and dye and have margin integrity that is much more precise compared to other print systems. So definitely if you're getting into complex printing, model and dye, implant type cases, um, Stratasys claims that they can handle full arch implant printing, model printing, and same with carbon. So I would never print a full arch implant case, something that I'm gonna do a bar on, on my moon ray. So once again, looking at open versus closed, what, here's a couple of things that you can look at when trying to decide what's best for you. What software are you designing with, first of all? Um, are you using 3Shape? Are you using ExoCAD? Are you using InLab? And that makes a big difference because a lot of these printers are being designed to work specifically with certain software. So look at your software and then look at what printing companies are working directly with that software. And then you have a smoother integration system. It's not that complicated if you're using a different printer that's not necessarily uh, teamed up with a certain software. However, sometimes they eliminate a couple steps for you to make that easier. So look at your design software. Um, next is what are you printing? What are you hoping to print in your laboratory? Are you looking to print models? And if so, if you're a small laboratory and you're just wanting to do model printing, is that something that is cost effective and efficient for you? Are you just needing to print solids? Are you needing it for backup or quick options when you're receiving digital files? Or is that something you still want to send out? 
we've sent out multiple times to Argon. Argon has carbon printer, they have Nextent printer, they have some really good printers out there that they can print very accurate models for us. And the prices come down a little bit for outsourcing model printing, but definitely when we want a really precise model, we send it out. We don't have one of the large printers here in our laboratory. So um, are you looking, what else are you looking at printing? If you're a small laboratory, we'll go through some of those options and what you can print as a small laboratory. But what are you hoping to gain in printing? So ask yourself that. What software am I using? What do I really want to print? And how will that help me be more efficient in my business? And then what type of volume? That's the next question. How many will I need to print per day? And that will help you break down your price um, comparison so you can determine what printer will be best for you and has the best, best price point. When I talked to Carbon the other day, they said that if you're looking at printing with Carbon, first of all, your labor actually goes down because of their process. So um, they were saying it can go anywhere from an hour and a half from traditional labor down to 30 minutes. So you're actually reducing the labor that you have. They said, you know, from what I've heard on average, three to four dentures, if you're printing three to four dentures a day, you want to sneak in a couple of night guards in there, great. Now you can justify the cost of it. If you can't justify the cost of it, and we'll get into that, I'm sure there's some questions out there um, on how much it costs, what kind of volume should I be doing if I'm going to use something of that price range. Um, we'll answer some of those questions in just a little bit. But really, you need to look at your volume. How many am I printing? Is it just a toy, something I'm playing around with? If it is just a toy, okay, get a smaller printer. There's a lot of great systems out there. Um, and then we'll talk about in just a second what we can print with these smaller printers compared to the larger ones. And then most important too is your support. I can tell you Sprint Ray, they've been great at working with us, but I think they stopped ans answering our calls for a while. <laughs> when we started with their system, we had so many questions on how, like, how to calibrate all these different products to use in their in their printer and they got to the point where their programmer actually got on the phone with us and was helping us go in and, and change the coding and then uh, eventually it was harder to get a hold of them <laughs> so know what your support is but most of all just find out what products have already been tested with that printer and that's one cool thing about keystone industries when we got their surgical guide material and printed it I, you know, we were originally outsourcing our surgical guides and we tested their material, printed it, and it fit better first time. On our first time, it fit better than what we we're getting from outsourcing. And I thought, how is this possible? How is it possible? I didn't even have to go in and calibrate anything with the moon ray. And we found out that they've already worked with some of those print companies to calibrate it with their existing software. So that makes a huge difference. So there was no calibration on our end. We could just put the material in and print it out and it was very accurate. They do have a list on their website of what printers they've already calibrated their products with. So you can go in and see when you're considering buying a printer, look at the products, look at which printers they've already worked through the software and know it works with their system. Um, that's gonna be huge. Because honestly, if you're buying an open system and you want to use somebody else's product in a different printer, you're, you're, gonna, you're going to have some calibration to do. And if you're gonna constantly call a company and say, hey, I'm not using your printing material, I'm using so-and-so's, help me figure out and help me make it work on your system, you may get some hesitancy from them. You may have some challenges trying to get the support you need trying to use other products on a different printing system. So, um, Knowing what printers you're using, what products you want to print on them, and then knowing what kind of support you have with those companies is huge. Uh, Carbon really talked about that yesterday, is that they're, they're, all of their internal systems are managed by them. So the support you get from them is almost, I told them it's almost like having another employee that is working on the coding and the calibration and making sure that it's constantly accurate. Carbon does that for you. So we know we don't buy a carbon printer, it's more like a lease, and it pays for that support. So I look at the carbon system as I've got that employee or that technical support there that's constantly managing and maintenancing that printer, so I don't have to worry about it, which is what I like to do. I like to test some things, but some areas I like to delegate to someone else so that I have more time for the things I enjoy. Um, and then efficiency. We're all excited to jump in and buy a printer. And right now is, like I said, it's a perfect time now. 
I think the industry has, has evolved enough where printers are getting more accurate. There are some areas they're not as precise as we'd like them to be, but they're getting there. And there's definitely some things that we can print with accuracy that we can even do on small printers. So look at efficiency, do the breakdown in your laboratory, do a financial analysis. How much time and how much labor am I going to be spending on this 3D printer? Is it going to help me be more efficient? Or is this going to cost me more and maybe slow me down? Do I not have the manpower to delegate to that right now? So would I be better outsourcing that and still being able to take advantage of 3D printing? Um, one thing we need to remember with being a dental technician is we tend to be, um, uh, what's the saying? Um, jack of all trades and master of none, right? Because we like to do everything ourselves. And especially in our small laboratories, we wear so many hats and we, we brag about that sometimes like, oh yeah, I do this, I do that. And I just work 23 hours straight or 32 hours straight. Like it's a cool thing, but really it just means we don't understand the power of delegation and how to be efficient. So learn that even if you can't get a printer right now and you want to um, delegate and outsource to those people that are really good at it and use them. You don't have to do everything. And then when you do have the time or the, the employees there that you can implement 3D printing, great. You'll find that there are ways you can be more efficient and save on your time and labor by adding printing systems. Um, on that note too, I absolutely believe that 3D printing is going to be the majority of our work in how we utilize um, dental technology. That it is the future, it is here now, and it's getting more accurate and there's a lot of really cool things that are coming with 3D printing. So if you're not on board yet, you will be soon. If you have some questions, we can talk about those later on how to implement it into your laboratory. But no, is it efficient? So what design software am I using? What do I want to print? Ask yourself that first. Um, what's most cost effective? What's most efficient? And what's my focal point for my business in printing? And then what volume? So you know what type of printer you should get to handle that volume and then what type of support I have. So what printing options are available now? We're gonna talk about some things. Um, like I said, Keystone Industry, I really wanna hand it to them. I've known this company for a while, great people, um, but their products, they've really done a good job with their products. And the reason why any, anyone can develop a resin, anyone can develop a product. But what they did is they went and worked with those printing companies to make sure it works with the printer. And that's the difference in their product is knowing, here's my product, here's a great resin. Sure, there's lots of great resins out there, but now they took a great resin and made sure it worked with the different printing systems so we know it can work for us. So they, they really did a good job. Um, looking at their key guide, their key guide is for their surgical guides. They also have key um, splint, which is their soft clear, and then the key splint soft. Now in the middle here, you can see the one, it's for carbon printers. I've printed surgical guides a couple times um, and I printed my night guards. So, sorry, I printed night guards. We did several printed night guards. I thought it was a really cool concept uh, because night guards are pretty labor intensive. And anyways, we printed a bunch and I tested it in my brother's mouth. He's a very heavy bruxer. And he tore through that thing in less than a month. <clears throat> it was not this brand, this product brand. But we tested a couple other printed night guards and I was surprised with how quickly it fell apart. So I have heard after talking to Carbon that the key splint soft clear that's printed on the Carbon printer, and if it's cured correctly, has a much better wear. So check your products if you're wanting to use night guards. I have found that the 3D printed night guards cannot be um, as strong or as stable as the ones we make by hand, but it's mainly your process and the type of printer you're printing it on. So use a good printer and be really careful with your curing. Because curing, if you over cure or overheat, they can become brittle and um, fall apart a lot faster in the patient's mouth. So um, they also have the model material, key model, key ortho model. We've done a lot of the key ortho model and that's been very effective. We poured up some traditional impressions of stone models and then printed some ortho models and then did vacuum suck downs and we tested on both the stone model and uh, the key ortho model model and both fit exact same. So that was very precise. So if you want to use this for aligners, it's a great way to, to get into the market. 
If you're not sure how to get into aligners, um, Stratuses, I talked to them, they have some great connections. You can contact Stratuses and they'll be happy to help direct you to some of their aligner companies. Even if you don't want to print them yourself, there's some great companies that you can connect with and still offer those services. Um, key mask is a cool material. Now we're getting into more flexible materials and uh, you can print your gingiva. And then key cast. I have not personally done any printable casts yet. We send out our, um, our partial frames right now. So uh, Dense Fly Serona and Carbon have done something really cool this year, which some of you are probably already familiar with. They launched the Lucitone Digital Print Denture, which is a printable denture, which got me really excited. I know they've been able to print dentures for a while in the past, but finally we've got something that's a lot stronger. And Dense Fly Serona has their denture teeth, which it has a smaller intaglio surface, so you can glue them into the printed base, which I'm very excited about. I know that this is going to continue to quickly evolve here um, over this next year and even more so into the following year. But one reason I think printable dentures is so cool is because when we, we have a removable laboratory within our lab, and we can only make about two to three dentures a day per technician. So with a printable system, you can print up to, I believe, five to seven dentures on one platform. And that's pretty awesome, considering it takes, you know, one technician two to three days to be able to make a traditional denture. So I don't feel like the gingiva is as aesthetic as it can be. But however, for an interim denture, this is awesome. We can quickly design and print and get something in the patient's mouth to test it out and make sure to equilibrate the bite um, to get them something while they're healing and going through surgery. It gives us a very economic approach to dentures that, that eliminates all the labor that was going into it before. Because those of you who are doing removables know if you're making an interim denture and a final denture and you're doing it the traditional way, the labor is almost the exact same. And it's hard to charge for an interim and the final denture the same price, but the labor is about the same. So having a printed option, I find very exciting. So we're hoping to implement this into all of our interim dentures. And we're working on uh, composite gingiva. There's some aesthetic approaches you can do to enhance the gingiva and, and make these look a little bit prettier. Um, but overall, it's, it's been a really nice product. So I think it's a very exciting year what we can do with printable dentures. So what can I print accurately? This is a question more for small laboratories, large laboratories. You can have access to the larger printing systems like carbon and some of the larger ones from Stratuses. Um, they print very accurately, like I said, with the large models or implant retained type cases. Uh, but for a smaller laboratory, what can I print um, accurately? Let's take a look at some of the things. We have orthodontic models that can be thermal formed. We've already talked about those. Those work really well. You can do indirect bonding trays, surgical guides, night guards, study models, diagnostic wax ups, Small printers can handle some crown and bridge, but remember you can get some distortion, especially on full arches when you're trying to print on a small printer. And then large printers can handle the full arch or complex implant cases better. So my options in a small laboratory, um, for me personally, orthodontic models, we know work well on these smaller printers. We've had no problems with them. Indirect bonding trays I haven't played around with too much. Surgical guides, we do all of our surgical guides printed in-house now. Like I said, if you're not doing this, try it. You'll realize it's so easy and it's just, it improves turnaround time and efficiency being able to print it in-house. Um, night guards, I, we printed some, like I said, I was hesitant due to um, the longevity of them, but now we've got some other options like Keystone's material that we can use on a carbon printer. So. That's my next test, is to see how well that holds up in the mouth compared to other comparable materials. Study models, diagnostic wax ups. Um, we get most of our diagnostic wax ups through scan files. So we receive an STL, we um, go ahead and do our diagnostic wax up. We can either choose to take that digital scan and print the model and then do a traditional wax up over the top of it, or just do a digital wax up and print the final. So we'll print a pre-op and then print the final diagnostic. And that's been nice because diagnostic wax ups we don't usually charge a lot for. Uh, we make our money off of the final product. So being able to accept a digital scan 
allows us to eliminate shipping fees too. And it improves efficiency. We can get that case quicker. They can take the scan, get it to us that day. We can go ahead and print the models that same day and start that diagnostic wax up very quickly. And you can even send those files to them so they can print it in their office. So diagnostic wax ups uh, can be handled really quick now and it saves us money and time uh, being able to just print the models uh, directly. Like I said, it is a nice option to be able to send that file to your doctors if they have a printing system in-house, then you have no need for shipping. Um, small printers, like I said, I use for some Crown & Bridge, but we usually send ours out to um, like Argon to print on their carbon or something that's a little more precise. One thing we found when we're printing models on small printers, they may work. Um, most time they're good. We've had pretty good feedback from our doctors saying, okay, a single crown, margins were pretty accurate, fit was pretty good. Um, but we've noticed if we take that design file and print that model multiple times on different prints, not on the same, same platform, but several different batches, we'll notice if we compare those models side by side, the exact same model, there's some distortion or some discrepancies between the two. It's hard to get consistency on these little printers. Um, large printers, like I said, are the full arch. So what we're printing is orthodontic models, surgical guides, study models, diagnostic wax ups, um, and then, like I said, some crown and bridge when we need it, but definitely surgical guides has been our main focus right now. So um, we can stop for just a moment, Sarah, and answer any questions that we have on these different print systems. I, I'm probably not gonna have enough time to dive into them as much as we'd like to. I know when I lectured on this in Chicago, there's a lot of questions like, just tell me which printer to buy, tell me which system to get. And really, once again, it comes down to what do you want to print and what type of software are you using and what's your volume that you're going to be um, working with on a daily basis. So we can go ahead and open it up, Sarah, and, and take some of these questions before we go into surgical guide fabrication. Hi, Jessica. See if everyone's um, awake at the moment. <laughs> I'm looking through our chat right now. Um, does anyone have any questions for Jessica? Okay. Um, can printed denture bases be relying slash repaired? Um, I've heard yes and no. Any, any printable material is slightly different than what we're using with traditional acrylic. You can. I would definitely not want to guarantee the longevity of something like that. Any reline anyways, it's always better to start the product over again. But the nice thing is, is the printing system so inexpensive, why reline it? <laughs> why not just take a new scan and reprint a new one? So um, I would rather go that method instead of trying to reline it. I think you will have some problems with delamination over time with this material. Um, our next question, can you address FDA compliance with different processes? Yes, so each company has been working to make sure that they have FDA compliance. So Keystone Industry, I know they've worked to get FDA compliance on their surgical guides. Not all companies are the same. So take a look at your products and see what those individual companies have done to make sure that they are FDA compliant and that they are approved. And I know that if the company that I'm using their products is approved, then I'm protected through them. So be careful with that. A lot of people are out there are trying to create a lot of things and not realizing we're still putting something in a patient's mouth. We do wanna make sure it's FDA regulated and work with the companies that make sure that that regulation is approved. I know Carbon has done the same thing too, to make sure their, their products and their systems FDA regulated. Um, I think that's all we have for now. Ah, is everyone asleep? Do we still have people on? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll go ahead and dive into surgical guide. Um, there's a lot I wish I could cover, but I know for the sake of time, it would be fun to do more of a hands-on workshop, but I'll take you through the process. And if you have some more questions, Really, it's, it's a very easy process. So we'll go ahead and start the surgical guide and we'll have um, some time at the end for a few more questions if everyone's still awake. All right, so like I said, the surgical guide we used to outsource, um, but we realize it's, it's such an easy process to do here in the laboratory. The one thing I, I wanna caution you on is a lot of companies want to get in or a lot of laboratories wanna dive in and do the whole guided implant treatment planning for the doctors. Be careful when you're doing this. 
Um, we use Blue Sky Bio. Blue Sky Bio has tons of YouTube videos that you can use. Uh, you can pay per export or pay per use per surgical guide. It's a very cost effective way to do it, and it's been pretty simple for us to use. However, I know ExoCAD and 3Shape already have it in their software. We currently have InLab and ExoCAD, so it just depends on what software you're using, um, if it allows surgical guide fabrication. If it does not, there's programs out there like Blue Sky Bio that you can handle it pretty easily. You have to watch a few YouTube videos, but there's training like you can see this Learn Blue Sky Bio. Um, there's so many training videos out there that you can watch to learn how to do it. But I just want to caution you to be careful because sometimes we go in as a technician and design these cases and place these implants and then the doctor just takes a quick look and says, yeah, it's great, but we are not the surgeons. So make sure if you're going to be working with surgical guides, get some training on how these should be placed, how implants should be placed, but also put it back on the doctor as their responsibility to make sure everything's the best for the patient and in the healthy position for the patient. Um, never take responsibility of, of the technician as a technician for that final approval. So make sure you always have the final approval from the doctor. Um, okay, so like I said, there's a bunch of YouTube videos on here you can watch um, through guided surgery. There's a lot of people want to make sure you do this right. So um, like I said, you can go through Blue, Blue Sky Bio, watch all their YouTube videos, and uh, here's a link too that you can see for some of their training videos that they have as well. It may take you, if you're new to this, it may take you a few hours to watch these videos and get comfortable with it, but it was, it's a fairly easy process. I know Three Shapes made it really easy too. Um, so once you have everything in place, you can send the file. I know um, uh, Blue Sky Bio, we can send a really nice portfolio to the doctor for approval. It has all the different images and the different views that they can take a look at, and then the doctor can approve it through their portal. So we export everything through Blue Sky Bio, through a, um, a HIPAA compliant portal. And then the doctor approves everything, sends it back and we get a notification that he's approved it and we're good to go ahead and print. Or we'll get a notification of the changes that he's requested and we can go ahead and make those changes, send it back to him for approval once again. And once that's done, we can go into manufacturing. Um, it's a pretty simple process for printing. I wish I, had more information to really put on here to show that it was complicated, but it's not, it's super easy. Uh, one thing you can do is go to Keystone's website, um, come into the material you wanna use, and you can select their printer. And this will help you get your settings correct. So they'll have a list of the different printers that they recommend for that material that they've tested. Once you select what you're printing on, you can select your resin that you'll be working with. And then you can go in and it will give you all the printer settings as well. So it will tell you the recommended layer thickness. And then it will also give you all your curing times. Curing times is really critical. I have a picture that I inserted in this video really quick this morning to show you what happens when these are not properly cured. Um, I've got a little video in here too that will take you through. These are the different polishing options that we can come back to this slide. Polishing this material is so easy. So design it, and then we're gonna export it into our printer. I'm gonna show you how we put it in there and put the supports on in just a minute. But this material polish is so easy, it's, it's really easy. We just put it on our lathe like we do our night guards and our dentures with just a, a high shine polisher and just polish it up. It, it's really that easy. We remove all the supports with a carbon or a fine diamond, clean it up and polish it up and and then when we glue in the insert, the sleeve, we just place a little bit of the lab glue around the sleeve and a little bit inside the surgical guide and place them. I've got a little video that will show on how we place this into our printer. There we go. Make sure I have that here. There we go. So this is, like I said, using the Moonray. We're just gonna import that file, that STL file. You can do multiple, it just depends on your bed platform on how many you can fit in there. But one thing is, is you need to make sure it's at the proper angle and you've got the right amount of supports for it. This is where we get some discrepancies and inaccuracy is depending on the angle that you place them and then the supports that you attach to them. So getting it at the right angle and then getting the right supports attached to it. You know, this 
really just takes one to two minutes to quickly position these and add these supports. If you're new to printing, don't worry. This is, this is so easy. And any company that you want to buy a printer from or Keystone Industries can help you uh, learn how to quickly set this up. But um, it doesn't take much time to train someone on how to do this or learn how to do it yourself. You can go ahead and add your supports. Make sure it's positioned once again at the right angle. So if you print these too flat, you'll get some inaccuracy. And also if you print them too steep of an angle, we found some inaccuracies as well. Um, another important thing I want to note too is make sure you have enough windows here. When you put these windows in, the doctor needs to be able to make sure that the surgical guide snaps down in place if this is a tooth-borne surgical guide. And the only way they can tell is by the tooth that, come, that shows through those windows. So in the beginning, the software told us just put one to two windows. We try to add three when possible so that the doctor can see that that's securely seated all the way. If not, that implant placement is going to be inaccurate. So add a couple extra windows on your design and make sure the doctor can see all the way around that surgical guide that it's seated down. We're just positioning it here. And it's almost ready. That's it. And then once it's done, it's just simple as click print. Um, after printing, we had a couple more videos we we're going to insert in here, but for the sake of time, there's a couple things I just want to address. Once you print this, um, if it's a sprint ray, like I said, it's a very easy process. Keystone Industries has already calibrated it with the sprint ray. Um, you'll take it, remove it from the printer. I leave it still attached to the base with all the supports and put it through the post um, process. So um, one thing to know is not to use traditional alcohol, but you can use, you want 97%. We've got just a little bath, it's, um, a little kit. If anyone has questions on the, the cleaning process afterwards, um, let me know and I'll get you our information. We just ordered our kit off of Amazon but it's just two different bowls that we place them in with little magnet base underneath. And we put these little dice in there and it just spins them with this magnet. And then it helps rinse all of the material off of it. Um, it cleans it, let's see. The main material that they recommend um, is not to use the extreme alcohol. Like I said, you do want 97% isopropanol and make sure it's not soaked in there any longer than five minutes. That's critical. We've had some people forget and leave it in the container for a while. So five minutes. We put it through two to three containers to make sure we've removed all of the material and then rinse it off and cure them. We've done some studies now on the curing process. That's my computer, sounds like it's, I'm running too many things on it. Um, one thing I wanna note with a curing, curing is critical. So when you're looking at buying a printer, um, they made it really easy for us. Most of these print companies are selling the curing units that they know are compatible with their printer and the print resins. So Carbon has the printer that they recommend and they actually bundle it together in a package for you. Moonray now has a print or a light curing unit that comes with their printer too. But we found that traditional printers you, or curing units, you can't use some of the traditional curing boxes that you may already have around your lab. They produce too much heat. So be careful with that. This is the same material here on your left-hand side, cured three different ways and three different units. And look at how the color changes. So you do wanna see that purple color with Keystone Industries um, key guide material. And if you're putting it in a different curing unit that can overheat, it can change it more brown. But also if it's overheated, we found it makes it more brittle and the fit is completely changed. So be careful, go slow with your curing um, process, make sure it's the right temperature that's recommended. And like I said, Keystone Industry has that guide on their website. But I, I can't stress enough, be careful with your curing because that's, that was our biggest problem in the beginning. And if you, the product's not working well for you, most likely if the fit or if it's too brittle, if you're having any issues with the quality, the overall quality of the product, it could just be due to your curing process. So careful that it doesn't produce too much heat. I know some people are using like the nail salon, the gel nail uh, curing units. I've heard that those can work well. Um, they don't produce much heat, which is the main reason why they can work well. They may not be as a uniform curing light source, 
Um, some people leave it out in the, in the natural light and let it cure for a couple days. That can work pretty well, we've found. If you have a couple days to let it sit around and cure naturally. Uh, we even got really experimental and put some out in the sun. And we had some white printed models with a different company and it turned the models green. <laughs> so be careful. Yes, you can set some things out to let them cure naturally. However, it, it is recommended to follow the materials instructions on the curing unit in the right curing, um, uh, the right curing light and heat to make sure you're not overheating them. So um, this material can be autoclaved. Uh, we've tested it on a couple different doctors' autoclaves. Some of them we did get some discrepancies and some were more brittle because once again, their, their temperatures were not accurate. So if your doctors do need to autoclave a surgical guide, check the parameters on their, their autoclave and make sure it's within the same parameters that Keystone Industry recommends. Um, other than that, it's, it's a really easy process. You print it, clean it, make sure your curing is correct. And then you order your sleeves and the sleeves, we usually order them in bulk. So we've got a couple different sizes on hand. They're very inexpensive. Um, some are as inex inexpensive as $10 a piece. And just place a little lab glue around the sleeve and around the model and insert it in. Um, let's see, I think that us. I just wanted to wrap up real quick too and we'll answer any other questions we have on the surgical guide process. But um, I answered, asked this question in Chicago in February. Where is the future going with 3D printing? And for those of you who went to IDS, uh, last year, we've seen that they're now able to print zirconia. And I haven't seen a lot of companies jump on that, but there's a few companies that are working on that at the moment. I asked the question, will it be possible to print a tooth eventually with internal and external characteristics all in one? And the answer is yes, it's coming. And if some people panic and freak out about digital technology, there's no reason to. It doesn't replace technicians necessarily. It allows us to evolve. And I think that it's such a cool concept to take what we know in our mind and be able to digital, digitalize that and create accuracy in one. But it's, it's, for me, anyways, I went through school for graphic design. So for me, it's really, really fascinating where technology is going. Um, when I asked that question in Chicago, you know, we've got new material like carbon filled composites, um, such as stratuses. We're looking at carbon filled or carbon fiber printable materials that can be heat treated and hardened that may possibly replace some of our frames, our metal frames, uh, being able to print material, then heat treat them uh, just like they do auto body parts, if you've seen how they do the carbon printed body parts. Uh, so that, that's coming. I don't know when. I'm looking forward to that too because I don't personally like casting metal. Luckily, I've got an awesome guy that does that for me. Um, accuracy is improving. Like I said, the surgical guides, uh, you know, you're, there's a lot of things right now, night guards, there's a lot of areas that are very accurate. It's more of the full arch, full large cases that you need to be careful with depending on the printer you're on. Speed is getting there, um, but once again, speed, you also want to look at resolution. So when you're looking at a printing system, what is the speed and what is the resolution? Um, because sometimes those don't always go hand in hand. They may be slower for a high resolution, or some can handle high resolution and high speed. Um, cost. Cost is coming down. I have some nephews that were playing around with a cheap little 3D printer that they bought online, and we're printing incredibly great detail. So we're finding that printers are getting more accurate, and the cost is going down as well. And then these full color scans like Stratasys. You know, they've, they've been working with three shape to be able to take intraoral scans in color and then print in color and replicate tooth color and tissue color. So I'm assuming that's going to come into the denture world too. Maybe we'll be able to print multi-layer uh, denture color and tooth color. And I, I know that's not hard to believe that that will definitely happen. Um, zirconia. So we talked about zirconia. I had a company come to me after and present a crown to me that should be released here in the US, um, I believe sometime this fall, depending on where delays are right now. But they are printing composite-based restorations. And this particular company printed one that was had five-year studies in the patient's mouth with almost 0% water retention. 
So I'm really excited. We'll be implementing that and testing that this fall once that's available in the U.S. Um, so that's going to change the way we restore teeth too, maybe long-term temporaries or having that as a final tooth option. So um, I'm going to open it up to some questions because I know we're almost out of time and I can talk too much. Um, what questions do we have so far? Do we have any more questions with surgical guides too? Or this can be a good group discussion. Anyone want to throw in some other ideas and things that they are excited for as well? Hi, Jessica. We do have a couple questions. Um, one of them was, can you share what you purchased for cleaning the print uh, from Amazon? Yeah, I am happy to put together a list, Sarah. Is there a way that we can email a product list to those that are registered? I can send out an email. Yeah, I'll put together a list um, with the pictures and the product numbers that we ordered so you can see the system that we used. Perfect. And then I'm happy to, if anyone has any questions, they can email me directly. We'll get you my contact information as well, and we can take you through that process if there's any questions on how to use it. Perfect. Um, Next one is the sleeve placed before autoclaving. And I hope I said that right. <laughs> and if so, does the adhesive withstand autoclaving? We place it before autoclaving, yes. And we've had no problem, problems with it coming out. The only problem we had with some of our doctors that we sent it to and let them test is some, the autoclave, the heat was too high and it burnt the material. So just make sure their parameters on their autoclave, Keystone Industry, like I said, they have their their parameters online, make sure you check with whatever autoclave that they're using to make sure it's correct. Um, next question, how do you check accuracy of a printed die slash cast and a printed crown slash coping? Uh, do you pour a stone die slash cast to check? Yeah, we did in the beginning. I was really nervous, especially if you're getting into a new printed system. We, we poured up traditional models and printed models and then made the crown and checked it on both the printed and the traditional stone model to verify accuracy. I think that's a good idea for you. It's just like printing or milling zirconia off of a digital file. In the beginning when we started, we got a traditional impression and a digital scan and then we were able to see if our software was calibrated. And like we, we know sometimes zirconia margins can be a little bit bulky so that told us how much we needed to take in that margin. So yeah, I would definitely in the beginning when you're new to it, do a traditional stone model and a printed model, fabricate a crown and test it on both. And then you'll know if your settings are correct. Hopefully that answers that. And that looks like it was our last question. Does anyone have any other questions? So talkative this morning. I think that's it for our chat. Hey, well, I guess that's it. Like I said, there's a lot of exciting things coming. Carbon, you can talk to Carbon about their printing system out there. Like I said, I, I was more hesitant with the Carbon because of the price, but after talking to them yesterday and they know their numbers, they know the volume you need to have to justify it. And they know the, the cost savings that it will have if you do have a Carbon. But also you can use places like Four 3 d um, and Argon to do those printings for you. For 3 d I spent some time with them on the phone yesterday too. Uh, they have some great people there that know a lot about printing. And so if you have questions, there's so many people out there that you can contact. You can contact For 3 d Carbon, Keystone Industries with their products. And I know that um, you, you're welcome to contact us too. I'll put together a product list for what I've been using for the surgical guide process. Um, and then I just wanna thank Keystone Industries Thank you again for simplifying your product and making sure it works with my printer and some of the other printers out there. It made it a really easy product to implement. And then I just like to leave that anything is possible if we have the imagination, first of all, to create it. And technicians seem to be those that already have so much imagination. We have so many ideas. Sometimes we think we came up with it all on our own and then get together with people around the world and find out we all think so similar. So we do have strong imaginations in the dental technology field. We just need to have enough passion to make it a reality. So we are the ones that are pushing this technology forward. If you have ideas, reach out to these companies, work with them. Um, we're technologists. And like I like to say, technologists are researchers. We test, we refine, and we implement. So don't be afraid if something doesn't work, reach out to the companies and help them refine it. And together we can really drive 
the 3D industry forward. So thank you again, Sarah and Keystone Industries for your time and Carbon and Core 3D and all the other companies that took my phone calls and let me annoy them for a while. So have a great Friday and a great weekend. Thank you guys.